your next speaker will be Sandy Alexander. Sandy is an occupational therapist with more than 25 years of experience. She works with Champlain Rehab Solutions, providing community services to adult CCAC clients in Ottawa. She has years of experience with home health care equipment, wheelchairs, and seating, and making recommendations to modify home environments for people with disabilities. Sandy. Thank you very much. Um, you've just heard Lori talk about assistive devices as well as home modifications to help you live independently at home. But the big trick is to figure out what do you need. So what should you consider before making modifications? What questions should you ask? And what conversations should you have within your household? Because as you know, any changes you make to your household will affect not only the person living with the disability, but everyone else. What tasks does the client engage in? Because are we going to do a kitchen modification for someone who doesn't do the cooking? No, we wouldn't do that. Um, are they bathing using a tub or are they taking showers? And what is the preference? We have to think about what tasks the client engages in. Is the client independent or do they require assistance? So we have to figure out what works for the caregiver as well as the person receiving the care. Is their disability stable or progressing? If someone has a stable disability, you know that whatever modifications or assistive devices you put in place today should be good a year, two years, ten years from now. If somebody is deteriorating, you need to think ahead, and no one has a crystal ball, so that's the toughest job of all, is to look at what might be needed five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, and especially if you're making a lot of very expensive home modifications, will those be what you need 10 years from now? Over what time will the condition progress? If someone has a very quickly progressing condition, if they're going to change within one year, when you think about the length of time it takes to do home modifications, you have to really look at whether that modification will be done in a reasonable length of time. So to keep that in mind. What are the costs? Because costs are prohibitive. No matter what we do in life, costs can be prohibitive. I'm in the midst, in the terrible midst of renovating a kitchen. And as much as I have dreams of what I would love, it was limited by cost. So you do have to sometimes take that into consideration. And then what funding is available? So you have heard from Lori about March of Dimes, and there are other funding programs, but the overall length of time it takes to go through the funding process can also limit what you can do and how quickly. So bathing. How many here love baths? Okay, how many love showers? And sometimes the two don't want to cross. So I have just learned of a retirement home here in Ottawa who put in those lovely premier walk-in tubs for all their new residents. They've already started taking them out. Not everybody loves baths. Not everybody wants to soak in water. Some people prefer a shower. So to think ahead a little bit about what do you want in terms of the therapeutic benefit of a bath, in terms of the quick and easy shower, you have to think, what is it that you really want to achieve? So the simplest, simplest modifications to help somebody continue to bathe in their own home in a tub can be as simple as some wall grab bars. Um, the, first, the first picture on the left-hand side is a bath seat. You have to be able to step in and out of the tub to be able to sit on that seat. So you may need grab bars, you may need uh, more, or you may not be able to step in. The bottom left-hand picture is a tub transfer bench where you can actually sit on the outside part of the bench and lift your legs or have somebody assist your legs into the tub. So that requires a different set of skills than stepping into the tub. And then the bottom right-hand picture is about a wheel-in shower. So if there's not going to be a way to use a regular tub, and showering is your option, then a wheel-in shower on a shower chair might be the best idea. Toileting. There are people who stand. 
to use the toilet. There are people who sit to use the toilet. The most difficult thing about sitting on the toilet is getting up off it. As most of you know, the standard toilet is 15 inches high. And even, <laughs> and even through normal aging, it gets pretty hard to get up off that height. So nowadays, Home Depot, Brona, everybody sells higher toilets. Brilliant, brilliant idea. So you have to look at the heights of everybody in your home, who's using the toilet, and whether they're all gonna be able to manage those raised heights. Simple solutions are an over-toilet commode, which is the top left-hand picture. You can add a raised toilet seat, which is the bottom, bottom right-hand corner or add support bars around the toilet to be able to give you that extra oomph to get up and off. Sleeping. Most of us can hop into bed, hop out, don't think about it. But if you have trouble getting in and out of bed, then it becomes a challenge. Just getting into the sleeping posture and being comfortable in that sleeping posture. So something as simple as a transfer pole at the bedside could help you get in and out of your standard bed. Or if you needed a hospital bed, which would raise up and down to give you a lower height to get in, a higher height to help you stand up and get out, um, it could help you to sit up in bed to reduce the effort in sitting up to get started at getting out of bed. It can raise your feet if you have swelling so that you don't have to struggle with getting a pillow under your feet. So a hospital bed has some many benefits. The most important thing about a hospital bed is to get the mattress right. And I think all of you know with all of the ads on the radio these days for Sleep Country and Mattress Mart and everybody, it's hard to find a mattress that's comfortable. So the challenge is to find one that's comfortable for you, that's pressure relieving cushions or pressure relieving mattress because as you spend more time in bed, you do risk getting soreness from staying in one position too long. So those are all important things to consider about sleeping. Transfers or lifts, just getting up off the toilet, up out of a chair, every surface you have to get up out of is called a transfer. So it can be difficult to get up off of regular heights. The picture of the lift chair that's there, it looks like a recliner, but it's a lift chair, will actually give you that added boost to stand up and reduce the effort it takes to get up out of a chair. If someone can't get up on their own and not with physical assist, then you can go to a mechanical lift. There's a, a version there of the portable one, and then you can see two pictures of track lifts on the bottom so that you can actually physically lift somebody up out of bed into their wheelchair without you physically doing the lift yourself. A sling, a piece of fabric goes around the person to help them get up and out. So the bottom right hand picture shows the sling around the person as it lifts them, I think it looks over the toilet. Meal preparation. As I said already, if you're not the meal preparer, you don't necessarily modify the whole kitchen if you're not gonna be doing any of the further meal preparations. But it might be that you need access to the microwave, access to the fridge, things that you do need access to. And there are all kinds of assistive devices. There are catalogs full of assistive devices to help somebody with limited grasp, limited hip flexion, all kinds of different limitations. There are actual gadgets that can help um, the top left hand picture is showing a, a handle that you can use to pull that top shelf of the oven open if you can't reach forward and bend down to do that. The other top picture is of a non-slip surface to help a plate from skidding away as you're trying to eat your meal probably with one hand. The bottom picture is look, showing you a countertop stove with a mirror over top because the person at the stove is at such a low height they can't see what's happening in the pots, whether they're boiling or get going dry. So that mirror, slanted mirror, actually sh shows what's inside the pots and what's happening on the stove. Laundry. Again, if you're not the one doing the laundry, you may not need to modify that. But if you are the one doing the laundry, 
You need to think about the height and the reach and all of those things involved in accessing the machines. The front-loading machines are great, but they're low. So you do have to think about getting them up on a platform. And the standard platforms that they sell in the stores aren't necessarily high enough depending on what you're using for mobility. So if you're using a power chair, that still may be too low and you may need to actually have a custom platform built so you have access to the machines. And then the question always is how to put soap in the top because very often it's a little drawer way up at the top. You have to look at whether it meets all your, your needs. Wheeled mobility within the home. Whether it's a wheeled walker, a scooter, a manual wheelchair or a power chair, all of those things need slightly different modifications. Doorway widths are essential when you're looking at um, wheelchairs. Walkers tend to fit through most doorways except for bathrooms. Does anyone live in an older home where a walker can't even fit through the bathroom door? Is anybody? Yeah. Some of these older homes were made with a very tiny bathroom door, so even a walker can't get through. And then some of our bathrooms are very tiny and narrow, and you couldn't get the walker past the sink anyways to get to the toilet. Flooring is really important with a walker. The carpets, thick, lush, beautiful carpets, are usually much harder to push, and especially for a manual wheelchair, much harder to push than hardwood flooring or tile. So surfaces can, be, um, can impede you depending on what device you're using. And the power chairs, power tilt wheelchairs, take up the most turning radius. Actually, no, sorry, scooters actually take up the, the longest turning radius. But power chairs with tilt also take up a fair bit of turning radius, so to keep all that in mind when looking at spaces. Wheeled access to the home. Anyone who's ever pushed a, a baby buggy will know that every place that says it's accessible is not always accessible. Small rises, small steps. For every person pushing a walker, every little step and curb is still a bit of a barrier. So to think about every little threshold to the home, and particularly the front entrance or the main entrance to the home, it can be ramps. It can be lifts, and I know Andre is going to talk more about those kinds of modifications. But every doorway can have a little raised threshold that can be a barrier. Access to different levels of the home. You may have your man cave on the base, in the basement level. Some people absolutely have to get to more than one level in their home. So how do you get from even if the main level is accessible, how do you get up or down? There are stair glides, um, motion specialties and convolate have had some displays showing stair glides. Uh, there are elevators that can be used very, very costly, but they can get you to more than one level in your home. The lift on the right hand side is called a vertical platform lift or a porch lift or a deck lift. It can take you up four, maybe six feet. So if you have a very high rise that you have to get up, one or two steps are easily ramped, but if you have four to six feet of rise, you have to think maybe of something else. Leisure activities within the home or computer access within the home. What is it you do during the day that you want to maintain your access to? Whether it is the computer and if you have some limitations with your uh, physical, the ability of your hands, you do need to look at some different methods of accessing the computer necessarily other than typing on the keyboard and lots of those things are available. So that's all that I have to present. Do we have any time for questions or should we move on to Andre? To just ask what does financial need mean? And with every organization, whether it's March of Dimes or Canada Mortgage and Housing, they always have a cutoff and it's not always the same cutoff from one organization to the next. So yes, it will be an income based uh, determination of whether you meet the criteria. So they can tell you from the get go, don't yep. to apply. That's right. And that's why they're doing it this way now. It used to be that we did all the work of determining home modifications, what equipment does somebody need, we get all of that going and putting the application, and then they end up having to say, 
sorry, don't meet the financial qualifications. So now it's determine that first and then figure out the rest after.